no one should believe anything that I said today. Let this be an inspiration for you to either confirm or deny and seek out the truth as it feels real to you. You know, because this information is deep. This information has a lot of, what you might say, taboos and phobias attached to it, okay? We had touched on it the first time that I was up here, how a lot of our elder scholars in their quest to find our place in the historical timeline, right? Any, they didn't want to hear about no, no, what they call them, ET and UFO. They didn't want to hear about no ET and UFO. Because, which is true, <coughs> Eurocentric history tries to negate any presence we have in a historical timeline, right? So, it's going to be the Hyksos, it's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the Phoenicians, it's going to be, it's going to be anybody but we. And then a lot of times it was, right, it came from the heavens, okay? But I think we were locked in an either or paradigm, not thinking both and, not thinking, yeah, they did come from the heavens and why? They were we. You know, and we had to look into our own cosmologies. We were studying our, we were studying the history, but we we were looking at indigenous cosmologies through the same lens as the European. Like we was imagining a lot of that stuff. Anything that didn't fit into the out of Africa evolution paradigm is something that was imagined, right? So, you know, this, this talking about the, this science ain't, it's not easy. It takes time. That's why we ain't get on, get to everything. It takes time. It's not easy. Because you got to deconstruct paradigms, belief systems, worldviews, and then bring in at the same time. Right? And so, I hope to help us with that process with some fun and some joy, you know? And uh, because, right, in saying that, why, 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 because look, this, uh, truth be told, I had no intention on studying this thing. I had no intention on dealing with any of this information, but I'm obedient, I'm obedient to the ancestors. And they was on me, they was on me, they was like, yo, you gotta deal with this. Yes. You got to deal with this. Okay. And, uh... Couldn't sleep at night. Come on, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh... You know, it is time. time. It is time yes. for us as a community Definitely. to be able to open up our awareness beyond the 3D, 4D reality of planet Earth. Thank you very much. You know, as our ancestors That's dealt right. with, That's right. you know, from long, from ancient times. Right. So, uh, it is a key to biblical prophecy. Hmm. It is a phrase that you find five times in the New Testament. All right. Yeah. Each one a critical prophecy. Hmm. Okay. The one that I want to bring to your attention is this one right here. When it says, you shall see heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending. Okay? That's what I want y'all to keep in your heavens, keep in your awareness that this is what we're going to see. We're going to see the angels of God ascending and descending. Okay? We're going to start by looking at another montage of the craft that has been ascending and descending from heaven the most. 
and that is the pyramid mothership. Because that is one thing that we can say, like if, if anything we can say, like right now, right here, we can say the pyramid mothership has opened up the heavens and is ascending and descending. It's not gonna go away just because you're, you're not deceiving it the way I'm giving it. It's not gonna go away. What does that mean? That you have to do your research, your research, to find a vision on this thing that's gonna make you feel as good as I feel. Y'all with me? Yes. yes. All right, time to want to tell. <laughs> so let's jump on into this. Let's jump on into this. So who is behind it all? That man they call Enoch. Enoch is the one behind it all. Wow. Okay? Enoch. The one them call Enoch. Is the one behind it all. And why do I say that? Let's let's look into this. Who is Enoch? Well, on a human level, Enoch is the seventh patri patriarch in the Old Testament, okay? He's the son of Jared, the father of Methuselah, the great-grandfather of Noah. Adam was the first man, but Enoch is the first prophet, okay? Now Enoch, I told you this man is known by many names by many people. I think he got 72 names, all right? This man is the Trimagistus of Greek teachings, the three times great Hermes, who is the father of all alchemy, al alchemical research, writing, you know, credited with writing the book, The Emerald Tablet of Hermes, and Kemet. This man was known as Tat Ani, the fish scribe, in his, in his earliest manifestation in the Nile Valley. He's also known as Tahuti or Jehudi. All right, but he's the scribe that wrote the Book of Life. They say if you know this book, all no powers denied you. All right, and he not in all of his various manifestations is usually credited with the creator of writing, the creator of calendar systems, the creator of agriculture, astronomy, all science and, and uh, encoded information. In the Dogon, Enoch is known as Lebe, and he is the one who descended from heaven to earth and did things that allowed all of humanity to have a direct and personal relationship with God. So this is what this man is known of doing in different traditions. And you could go, he's Sambo, or the bone, all right? I don't know about Sambo, right? The first Buddha, he's the Sambo, all right? So this man is known by many names, by many people. But we're gonna just deal with him as he not why? Because we can do a lot of research on him in that, in that, in that image. All right? Oh, I left out one. Enoch is Idris in Islam. And what is Idris credited with? Making the pillars. The Great Pyramid is the pillar of Idris. Am I right, Professor? All right. So... They say Idris was an antediluvian patriarch that for that foresaw the flood, knew the, the great flood and know what Noah was gonna have to deal with. And he wanted to preserve his teachings and science. So he built the Great Pyramid and, contain, and, and put his teachings up in there so that it would save the great flood. So be saved through the great flood. And I already shared with y'all. The one prophecy, we're gonna talk about why there's only one prophecy of Enoch in the Bible. How you got the first prophet, the man who set it all off, and this man got one, one small reasoning in the Bible, and it's echoed by Jude. It says, behold, I come with thousands and thousands, and myriads and myriads of my saints and holy ones. 
to execute judgment. Okay? And uh, Enoch does have some biblical reference, Genesis chapter 5. Yeah, he run through the genealogy. Okay, Jared had him at 162. Mm. All right? Now, when did he not walk to earth? We knew he's antediluvian, but when? Okay, they credit him with creating the pillars. The, 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 pil the Great Pyramid is referred to as the Pillar of Idris, or the pi Pillar of Enoch. Pyramid, mutable earth, pyramid, sign of Virgo. Astral, <laughs> symbolic. This was created in the age of Virgo, about 13,000 years wow. ago. What's that? It's going wild. Okay. So, uh, yeah. You not walk this earth about 13,000 years ago. Half of the 26,000 great. Okay. Now, why do we know more about Enoch? Very important question. Before we get into, well, why is Enoch behind it all? We got, why do we know nothing? How many people know about Enoch and his life? Not a lot. Man is the first prophet. I only see a couple of hands go up. Well, in the early, in the earlies, when the Essenes and the Gnostics were the ones known as Christians, Right? Enoch was highly honored, highly venerated. Okay? And truth be told, all prophets, prophecy is an echo of Enoch's. Revelation is a summation of the book of Enoch. Okay? And, uh, yeah, several of the early church fathers, Origen being a particular one, Tertullian being another one, Justin Martyr, all of these people really bigged up and not. Okay? These church fathers, their teachings are hard to find now. Why? Because they bigged up and not. Later church fathers began to discredit Enoch's teachings. Alright? Particularly these ones. Augustine, who wrote City of God, and Emperor Justinian in 543, he made the book of Enoch anathema. What does that mean? It means it's as if it never existed. Oh, yeah. Anathema means it's as if it has never existed. So in the fifth century, you had a purging, an expunging throughout the whole Roman controlled dominion of the Book of Enoch. It was completely eliminated. All teachings, and when something is anathema, not only is that eliminated, but anything that makes reference to it, to say it is as if it had never existed. So these church fathers, these cats, all of their teachings got eliminated also. You talking about the Ignatian Conference? That was a part of it. That was, the, you know, part of it. But it was, uh, you know. So now, why? Because there's major doctrinal differences between the book of Enoch, and I'll even say this. I'm mm. going to say this. If I want to tell the biggest lie ever told, what do I have to use? The biggest what? The biggest truth. If I'm going to tell the biggest lie, if I want to tell the biggest lie ever told, I got to use as a part of my life, the biggest truth. So I hope I'm not stepping on no toes when I say this. Stop. <laughs> but the Bible is the biggest lie and the book of Enoch is the biggest truth. And it's these core doctrinal differences that make it so. The nature of man. And the book of Enoch, he says man is essentially good. And divine. Bible. We're essentially carnal and sinful. And evil. Coming out of Adam and Eve. Nature of God and angels. Enoch teaches that God and the angels are 
corporal, meaning in flesh. Okay? Church teaches that they're in corporal light emanation. Some some force way up in the sky. Hanak, the root of evil, is fallen angels. That's corrupted humanity. The church, they say the carnal nature, the, the root of evil is our carnal nature. Communion. Anak says that we can have a direct and personal relationship with the Most High yes. through intercession of the angels. Mm -hmm. The church teaches that we can't can't have a personal and direct relationship and that we need intercession we by a priest and ultimately the Pope whose title is the Pontiff, which means the bridge. So he is the bridge, Pontificus Maximus, the supreme bridge between you and the Creator. Judgment. <laughs> judgment. Hanak says a harsh judgment is due these fallen angels. Church teaches a harsh judgment is due sinful humans. Another movie to decode. I'm here. Hold your, hold your, hold your thoughts, brethren. Uh, another movie to decode is This is the End. I went and saw that. And this idea of the harsh judgment, the rapture, the apocalypse, all these things we talk about, how this thing is going to go down. Yeah, they, they want to make it. They want to make us fearful of it. And revelations, if the dog that piss against the wall of Babylon can't escape the judgment, how are we as humans living in Babylon, how are we going to escape? So that's where the biggest lie comes in. You know, in Genesis, where they tell us we're born of sin, and revelations, when they say we should be scared of this judgment. But the, but the right. truth is in there. Yeah. Just twisted in them. Why? Because ultimately, it's not whether you know the biggest truth or not. It's how you feel about it. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, these productive emotions. It's not important whether you know the biggest truth or not. What is important is how do you feel about it? Right. Are you scared? Speak. Do you feel that you don't deserve, that you right. deserve your judgment? Woo. This, you understand? That's why we gotta have these productive emotions. Wisdom and knowledge. Enoch teaches that wisdom and knowledge is a saving grace. That's why he's the first prophet. He brings these teachings to be a saving grace to humanity. Bible tells us it was our quest for the knowledge of good and evil that caused us to be expelled out of the garden. Correct? <laughs> So now, I mentioned the Book of Enoch was anathema. It was as if it never existed within the Roman world. It wasn't until this guy, James Bruce, in the 1700s, went to Ethiopia and stole, studied, with, studied learned Amharic, learned Gi, studied with the priests and the monks, gained their trust, and then stole two copies of the Book of Enoch and the Cave of the Gas and took it back to England. That was the first time the Western world saw the fullness of the Book of Enoch, okay? And now Bruce, when he went there, he was like, yo, this geese, this geese is a serious thing. This is the oldest script that came straight out of Metanetra, okay? This was his, his uh, and beyond that, he said there are words in the Old Testament that in Hebrew don't make no sense, don't have a proper context. And it's only until you look at it in geese that it makes sense. Okay? But by the 1800s, you had cats like this, R.H. Charles come out, who then put this Hebrew veneer on the Book of Enoch that says, yeah, even though it was only found in Ethiopia, it was written by a Jew in the fifth century, and you know, blah, 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 blah right? So, Right, it was written by a Kassadim, or the tribe of Jan, a Dan from a Palestinian Jew. You know. Twist and turn. Twist and turn. So now, the Ethiopians, what do the Ethiopians say about the Book of Enoch? They say it dates back to at least 4,000 BC. At least, okay? They call the Book of Enoch the father of all scripture. 
They say Gies is the actual first language of humanity. That Gies was the first tongue before the confusion of the tongues in the Tower of Babel. So when humanity was in oneness and spoke one tongue, it was Gies that they spoke. Okay? Where can we get the book? Right here. I see everything. They got a book. Right <laughs> <laughs> that Jew, it's like that Jew version, is it? No. Nah. Let's hope not. <laughs> yes, sir. So now, he knocked. Where did the ease come from? He knocked. He not scribed the ease from instruction of the angels. Okay? And now, let's look at the ease, because the ease is deep. The ease is deep. The ease is not just a language. Okay? Let's look at let's look into how the ease is structured. Alright? The E's has 26 root letters vocalized seven different ways for 182 letters in total. It's set up as a consonant vowel blend. You know how we got consonants and we got vowels. All right? The E's has consonant vowel blends. They don't have A, E, I, O, U. They have He, He, Hi, Ho, Ku. Ke, Ki, Kai, Ho, Ku. Sa, Se, Si, Sa, Su. All right? So now, no, no Semitic language, Arabic, Hebrew, none of them are structured in that form. <coughs> the only language that's closest to the ease in that structure is Sanskrit. And we know Sanskrit is the mother tongue of all Indo-European tongues coming out of Indus Kush, right? And Giz is probably the parent of Sanskrit. Right. Okay? Wow. So now, it gets deeper. Languages are more than just a means of communication, okay? Languages can be phonographic, like English. English is very basic. Sounds representing a meaning, okay? But languages can also be numerographic, like Latin, right? Where it's a letter, there's also a number, right? Yes. Letters could... Also be ideographic, represent an idea, like Greek letters, and metanature. So delta represents something. Beta represents something. Gamma, they're letters, but they represent ideas. And sound. And sound. Y'all with me? Yes. yes. All right. Well, Gies has all of that. Gies is phonographic, numerographic, ideographic but it is also chronographic, representing days and time, and astrographic, representing points in space. In other words, Superior. constellations, okay? No other written script on the planet has those characters, characteristics, no other. Now, what do we mean that it's chronographic? The seven different intonations represent the seven days of the week. The 26 root letters represent the 26 weeks of a half year. Okay? The 182 characters represent the days of a half year. The Ethiopian year is 364 days. In a year of 13 months of 28 moons. 13 times 28 equals 364. 364 divided by 2 equals 182. So 182 is a half year in the Ethiopian calendar. <clears throat> and so if you are a priest and you don't have a calendar, you don't have a written calendar, all you have to do is chant a Gaiz character each day starting at the equinox and then you'll know Boom, you'll know what time it is. Okay? So, that gives whole new vision. Remember when we saw the orbs? Right? Yes. Making these formations right. over New York City? Yes. Gives this whole new understanding of that. The orbs wrote Allah and Muhammad. Y'all saw that? Mm -hmm. this, is where, this is where the roots of these things is coming from. Okay? So now let's let's continue looking at this guy Nock. We talked about his earthly movements. 
But what's important about him not is he not didn't just stay on earth. He not traversed all the heavens. Okay? And so it's recorded in Genesis that he walked with God. And that he was no more because God took him away. So what does that mean? He didn't die a normal death. All right? And in actuality, Enoch or Hanoch was transfigured. Okay? He was transfigured, which means, to transfigure means when it's time for you to go up to the heavens, you go in spirit and in flesh. Enoch went to heaven in spirit and in flesh. He was the first one. And in that light, Enoch is like the first Messiah. That first Yasos Christos. That one that comes with some teachings. And when it's time for him to leave, he leaves in spirit and in flesh. Enoch is that very first one. And as a matter of fact, I think Yasos Christos was Enoch returned. We knew Herod was waiting on someone to come prophecy a total. The Son of Man is returning. And so he was like, kill all the firstborn. Right? Yep. And that, so who was coming back? Who was returning? It was Enoch. Okay? When he not got to the seventh heaven, tradition, tradition tells us he became the archangel Metatron. Meta meaning beyond. Tron meaning power. Megatron. He was beyond all powers. Metatron. Megatron. In heaven, Metatron. He's fully heaven. Excuse me. Fully human and fully divine. Okay? The only being in the seventh heaven that has free will. The seraphim, the cherubim. They're like water. They like fire. They gotta obey natural law. Right. Metatron, the one angel, the one being in the seventh of heaven, seventh heaven, who has free will. Okay. So tradition tells us that Metatron functions as the word, that he's the heavenly scribe. You know, and we see images of Jehuti or Tehuti. You know, Metatron also has as a title, the mini Yahovia, the mini Yahweh, the micro, the Yahweh in microcosmic scale, okay? And he is the awareness in the seventh heaven that intercedes on the behalf of humanity. This is what tradition says, okay? So now, based on what we've been researching, we, the Star Nations told us we like y'all, but where y'all got carbon, we got silica, right? Mm -hmm. My meditation tells me that that transfiguration of Hanak and the Metatron involved them manipulating his DNA such that he became fully carbon and fully silica. Mm -hmm. Okay? That that's what the transfiguration of Hanak meant. That silica was made a part of his being. So he was still human. He was like us, carbon. He could relate to us, right? But him had that light dimension, too. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Right. Just hold your thought, brother, because I, I, I want to keep it going. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, let it go. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're going to keep it going. Okay. Hold, yeah. Just hold, hold your thought, brother. Right? We're going to reason. Let me, let me get through this, all right? <laughs> So now, that account of the transfiguration of Enoch is recorded in what's called the Hebrew book of Enoch. Not the book of Enoch that's here, the Ethiopian translation, but the Hebrew, the Hebrew book of Enoch, okay? And they say, right, he was brought up to heaven with the heavenly host, the Shekinah, the, the feminine presence of, of God, you know? And when, he's, when they started bringing him up to the seventh heaven, it said the seraphim, cherubim, and Ophan smelled him from 365,000 parasangs away. And they were vexed. They said, why is a son of man born of a woman? Meaning, a carbon-based human with free will. What? <laughs> Knowing how we can not be in full control of our thoughts. You, you bringing this being up into the seventh heaven? 
the causal plane where one thought can create a myriad of star systems and you're bringing this being up here? From the throne, the ancient of days was like, look, Earth is about to go bananas. They about, they, their DNA is about to get really corrupted. And this dude, Enoch, he's a, he's a pure being. He's a righteous soul. And I had to take the Sakina out of, <coughs> out of there because it's, it's about to get buck wild down there. Mm -hmm. And Enoch is of such a pure spirit, he deserves to come up here. He deserves to be with the Shekinah. So y'all gonna have to chill with all of that. Mm -hmm. So the seraphim, cherubim, and the Aphina, they had to obey. Mm -hmm. And Enoch was able to enter the seventh heaven. Once he got there, he received 300 million portals were open to him. All the mysteries of creation were revealed. No, no mystery was left unrevealed to Enoch. He received 5,360 blessings. He was given 72 wings, 36 on each side and 365 eyes. He was given a throne at the door of the seventh hall in the seventh heaven. Okay? Once he was there, he was made ruler of all angelic beings. So he is in charge of the seraphim, the cherubim, and the aphanim. He was given a garment of glory, a crown of glory, and he was actually set ablaze. So synchronistic, Professor Kareem was telling me this story driving up here. I didn't even know I was going to talk about it today. <laughs> telling me the same story. Okay? And he became the fire king of the seventh heaven. All right? He was given 70 names so he could be known by each tongue in humanity. That's what I said. This man is known by many names, by many people. Don't get hung up on the idea of just him being Enoch and just seeing him through a Judeo Christian lens. Right. Now, he was known by the 70 names, but the Most High, what the Most High called Enoch? You know, when you go down to Jamaica and them say, yes, me youth. <laughs> yes, my youth. Yo, the Most High's name for Enoch was my youth. Really? Wow. Was my youth. Wow. Because he is the son of man. My youth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so now, I mentioned this. That transfiguration, Enoch, they, they tapped his DNA, brought out a third strand, integrated that silica into his being. That's how a human named Enoch became the angel we know of as Metatron. Now, Metatron, Metatron's cube. Metatron's cube is what in terms of sacred geometry? It is. It's the foundation of all sacred geometry. Metatron's cube is the foundation of all sacred geometry. What is the primary language of the Aphanim? Sound. With the start with the crop circles. Geometry. Sacred geometry. Why the most important crop circle and the second most important crop circle? Why they're so important is because these were the first two crop circles that weren't in sacred geometry. They were in a language more human-like, you know? A disk with binary code that can translate into English. A, a crop circle of a pixelated image and an image of lines of resolution. These were unique to all crop circle formations before and since. Most crop circles are sacred geometry. And Metatron's cube is the foundation of sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is the language of the Aphanim. So they're telling you who they're coming by directive of. Archangel Metatron. All right? We said Enoch is that first Messiah, that first human to transfigure at death. Then he come in the image of Yasos Christos. 
who said, I'm going to come back, but when I come back, I'm not going to come back as a poor sufferer that y'all can beat up. I'm going to come back as the king of kings, lord of lords, conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Right? Right. Yes, I. And he said, I'm the alpha and the, and the omega. omega. So who's the alpha? Who's the first prophet? Enoch. Enoch. So he's the alpha. Rastafari is the omega. This is all the same being. This is all the same man in different incarnation. This is all the same man in different incarnation. Enoch, Yasos Christos, Rastafari. And I know when I was on KTL, I think it was Red Pill, he was like, yo, Ross, you, you a deep brother, because you a Rasta, and you dealing with the Star Nation stuff. And I, I said, when you come to Brooklyn, you're going to see why I'm a Rasta, and I'm dealing with the Star Nation stuff. Because if you ask me who is behind it all, Tyson. Ja, Rastafari, yeah. is the one behind it all. Because he is Enoch, Metatron in the seventh heaven, and he's come back to this earth in probably several incarnated states for each of them 70 nations. Yes. Okay? But in the incarnations that would inspire us being fed that Judeo Christian tradition, he came in these three images of Enoch as the first prophet. Yasos Christos. And then he told us how he was going to come back. And only one man I know fulfilled fit that prophecy. And it's in the, in the book, too. Who's that man? Who's that man? Oh. <laughs> now, are these things, cons we know they're not consistent with Roman Catholic teaching. No. We know that. So then the question is, is it consistent with Tawahedo teachings? Are these things consistent with the teachings of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church? Look at this image and meditate on what we've just been talking about. I see some consistency. All right, y'all got it, right? So now, angels don't exist. See, he's operating out of that Roman Catholic teachings that angels are light emanations, incorporeal, without a body, light emanations. So that's his idea of an angel. So when he reads in Tawahedo teachings that the angels, and in Tawahedo teachings, angels, we said in the book of Enoch, angels are, angels and God are corporal. Right? So he says, oh, they were misinterpreting. These were ETs. They weren't angels. Right? But now, let's, 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 let's penetrate this a minute because here is an example within our history that we have direct workings with the Ofan. Okay? Where Lali Bella, number one, it should be mentioned that Lali Bella was not of the Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia. He's a Zagwe king who's descended from Moses, not Solomon. So I'm an ancient, more ancient than the Solomonic dynasty even. All right? When, when they say when Lalibella was born, a swarm of bees covered his body, and that earned him the name the bees honored his sovereignty. And so they knew from that one event that he was going to be a future king. All right? And when he became king, the angel came and took him to the first, second, and third heavens. There they gave him a vision of the new Jerusalem, told him he had to come back down to earth and recreate the new Jerusalem by creating 12 churches of living rock, rock hewn churches, churches that are made of one stone, monolithic, cut into the mountain so that they would be living rock, okay? And they said, we're going to send the angels to help you. And so as the tradition says, the angels and uh, Lali Bella's masons worked side by side during the day. But when 
The Masons would go to sleep at night. The angels would get twice as, more, twice as much work done without the humans being in their way. Okay? And in 24 years, listen to this. Y'all gotta meditate on this. In 24 years, they completed 11 of those churches. Lali Bella passed in the 24th year of his reign. The 12th church was never completed. He was instructed to build 12 churches. And then that would bring in the New Jerusalem, who was only able to complete 11. But same way, there's no way humans, I'm sorry, there's no way humans could make 11 of them in 24 years. You can't tell me that. So we have to open up our awareness to the reality that the Ophan, if we are, if we put ourselves in the right position, they will come and help us, and they will come and work with us. We got to put ourselves in the right position for that to happen. So this reality is consistent with Tawahedo teachings. Okay? And then we mentioned that idea of this New Jerusalem. Because that's really what we're heading, that's what we're going to. This whole idea of revelation, the apocalypse, the fulfillment. The New Jerusalem is Revelations 21. It's the end of, it's the final vision that is revealed in Revelation. And the vision is a new heaven and a new earth opening up. And the dwelling of God coming down and living with humans on the earth. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. So I don't hear nothing about no rapture. I don't know where they got that thing from. Some of this idea that the way it's gonna go down is like some light is gonna come in and beam me up. The deceivers, because the new Jerusalem says it's gonna be a new heaven and a new earth. And we're gonna experience this thing here. Right, I've heard that. You know? So, uh, yeah, he says I'm going to make everything new. And it is done, because I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so then that brings us to a reasoning on what I'm, what we're going to talk about the transfiguration of his imperial majesty. So this is a topic people don't like to talk about. All right? Because enough for us to say, yeah, John no dead. Rastafari ain't died. And we know his imperial majesty was one of the most influential world leaders of the 20th century. Okay, just in case you didn't know, he is the architect of the United Nations. The three pillars upon which the United Nations is created. Global disarmament, collective security, and it escapes you right at this moment. That's bad. But his imperial majesty is the architect of that. Okay? And you're going to tell me the most important historical figure of the 20th century doesn't get a funeral. Right. Okay? So now the tradition that I've heard the tradition that I've heard is that Mengistu was, you know, orchestrating the coup. And because of the respect and honor that His Majesty had earned, they said, we're going to give you one final wish. We're going to give you one final wish before we take you out, brother. And his one final wish was to be escorted by his high priest, to the Holy of Holies in St. Uh, Mary Chapel to pray. They let him go in the Holy of Holies. One day later when they didn't come out, 
military made, did a major violation and went into the Holy of Holies. It's one door in, one door out. It was guarded the whole time he was in there. But when they went in there, His Majesty nor the High Priest were there. Where'd they go? I think they was transfigured. transfigured. I think they was trans. You ask Ross Ben, I'm gonna say he was transfigured. All right? I'm gonna say he was transfigured. And so that opens the that opens for me, right? Because this thing could go down many ways. And who knows how it's gonna go down? I don't know how it's gonna go down. That's why I tell you, I'm, I hope this is going to inspire y'all to do your own raw search. Because we got to build. Because I'm open to hear more. But this vision right here, this is the vision that I'm anticipating. This is the vision I'm anticipating. And we have to put ourselves in a position. Right now, we help us. Right now, because if this vision manifests, we stray. So you said, so the story I heard that he got, it stuck his body underneath the throne, all that is BS? How are you going to, the, again, the most important historical figure of the 20th century, that's, that's how you're going to treat his body? I don't know, brother. I've heard that, and he's and subsequently, right? From the so so he disappeared in '74, '89, and early '90s. Between that time, they had three different funerals and burials for him. Why you gotta bury a man three times? <laughs> yeah. So, do I know for sure? No, I don't. I don't know, but I'm going to be bold and put it, put this out there, and let time tell, and hope it be an inspiration for y'all to do more of this research and form more people, and let's let's discern how this thing is really going to go down. So I'm going, I'm, I'm ready to close. Oh, you are. I'm ready to close. I was just going to do a single. Oh, okay, yes, sir.